Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <sighs> ah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee Talk. It is Christmas Eve, Monday. I am thrilled that hopefully many of you are uh, preparing for some time off, even if it's just a day. Um, um, I hope you all slept well. I stayed up last night. I have been so bloated the last couple of days. My period is coming today. It's due today. I'm, I've been so bloated. I've literally been uh, like uh, Violet from, from uh, Willy Wonka. Like my stomach is hard and big. My pants don't button. Like my stomach just hurts. I'm so bloated and gotta love the period time. Great, good times. Um, and then I stayed up last night watching the West Wing because I'm addicted and, um, and I can't stop watching. So there's that. Uh, as a matter of fact, right after coffee talk, I'm going to watch the next episode of the West Wing. Um, hi, Michael Montgomery. Michael Montgomery. Oh, um, Anyway, I'm so glad to see everybody this morning again. Happy Christmas Eve. I want to tell you a story. Now, you've got to put your open-minded hats on because if you are going to uh, tell me how crazy I am, the story doesn't work, okay? So I need you to just be open-minded and understand that if the message isn't for you, then the message is for somebody else, and that's okay. Not every coffee talk is for everybody who listens. If it was, I would be Oprah, uh, and I'm not. So, um, okay. So, um, my girlfriend of a hundred bazillion years called me the other day, and she said, "My husband has been having an emotional affair for three years." And I said, okay. And she said, this is what happened. This is how I found out. This is this. This is what it was. This is what I said. This is what I did. Blah, blah, blah. Oh my God. And I said, okay. Um, and I said to her, well, for one, let's take a deep breath. Okay. Your husband doesn't have cancer. Your children are healthy. Like... Let's take a deep breath, okay? We can, we can get through this. We can deal with this, okay? This is, so she said, okay. Now, I think that there is some expectation that when a woman tells another woman her husband has done anything, left the toilet seat up, forgot to put the laundry into the dryer, left the kid at soccer practice, had an affair, whatever, that the other woman is immediately supposed to say, he's a piece of shit, get rid of him. And I am sure that there are a lot of women out there who will do that. As we all know, I am not the one you want to call if your husband has some sort of affair if what you're looking for is an immediate get a divorce, that's never going to be me. 
so I talked her through it and I said to her, um, w well, what is your short term goal and what is your long term goal? Like, what, what do you want to happen right now? You don't have all the answers. We know that. I don't know that you need all the uh, details because who does that help? We understand that there's a situation. Before we start burning the house down, let's, what is your short term goal and what is your long term goal? She goes, well, I want him to stop. I said, okay, well, now we're going to have to get into really hard conversation. And she was like, okay. I said, an emotional affair or friendship, whatever you want to call it, a special friendship, an emotional affair, whatever. Telling somebody to just stop is sort of like when I was young and I used to suck my thumb. I say young. I didn't stop sucking my thumb until I was 20. But when I was young and I used to suck my thumb, my mother used to say to me, just stop. Just stop. And uh, let me see if I unplug my phone if it's happening. It gets stops. Okay. Um, and she would yell at me, just stop. I need you to stop. Well, I wanted to stop. I had all of the best intentions to stop. I didn't want to suck my thumb. I, I didn't, I felt ashamed of the fact that I was the older person who sucked their thumb. But telling me to just stop, uh, you know, only frustrated her because I couldn't just stop. I wanted to stop, but then as soon as something happened, I found myself sucking my thumb. And oh, I was so comforted by it. And oh, it felt so comfortable to me. And oh, it was exactly what I needed. And oh, I, and, and even though I knew I shouldn't suck my thumb, and even though I didn't want to suck my thumb, I sucked my thumb. Because telling someone to just stop something that brings them good feeling or comforting feeling is, it's not a real thing. So I said to her, listen to me, my love. You can't tell him to just stop and expect him to just stop. A, f a special friendship or an emotional affair that has gone on for three years doesn't just end because you said just stop. That's not a real thing. You have got to allow him now hear me out, because I know some of you are about to start throwing tomatoes at me, okay? I said, you have got to allow him time to mourn that, to grieve it, to get over it. It was a real thing. Just because you weren't privy to it and you weren't part of it doesn't mean it didn't happen and it didn't exist, okay? And you have to understand that if you want to save your marriage, there is work to be done. A lot of work. First of all, there's forgiveness. But before there can be forgiveness, you have got to allow this man to grieve and mourn the relationship he is required to end. Because it's real. So telling him to just stop isn't real because guess what? If he tells you that it's over, just like that, okay, it's over. He's lying. He will go back because there has been no closure. There is no ending. There is no healing. There is no grieving. So when you ask a man to stop having an affair, physical or otherwise, and they say, okay, it's over. I'll never see her again. They are lying. They want to stop. They mean it at the time. They have every intention of stopping. But they will go back because there is has been no closure. And let me tell you something about a woman that's been in an emotional affair for three years. If you think she's just going to let it end because you said stop, you're out of your mind. It is a, pro they are human. I'm not saying it's right. And I'm not saying they deserve what, need, what is required to get over it. 
but I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Y'all, I know women have affairs. Be believe me. I know women have emotional affairs. Hi, my name is Jamie. I probably had a thousand. Okay? So, I am only using the example that was presented to me. I am not assuming that women don't do the same thing. They absolutely do. Okay? Same rules apply. So, let me go back. So, she said to me, let me get this straight. You mean to tell me that I have to tell him I need you to stop, but I understand that it isn't something that can stop overnight and you're going to have to figure out how to end this? I said, yes. That's exactly what you have to say. And I know it feels impossible and I know it feels unfair. But you are not going to break up your family over some bullshit. And that's exactly what it is. Because five years from now, you will look back at this. It will be part of your history, but a bump in the road. And you will watch your children graduate from high school together. And you will fill out college applications together. And you will bring your oldest child to college together. And you will raise grandbabies together and you will not end and break up your family over this shit you love him he loves you this is this sucks but the thing is that society sells us a fairy tale society tells us that our prince will come and he will sweep us off our feet and never look at another woman and she will never look at another man and everything will be perfect and we'll stay skinny and we'll be healthy and we'll keep having sex and our children will be amazing and we'll never have any issues and it'll be a fucking fairy tale. And we get so disappointed to the point of depression, anxiety, eating disorders, suicidal, okay? Uh, because marriage is, doesn't look like what is read to us out of books. Okay, now, let me tell you something. I said to her, there's another question you need to ask him. He's going to mourn one of these relationships. You need to figure out which one he's prepared to mourn. Because he may want to, now I'm talking to her as to what I think she should do, but I, don't, I haven't spoken to him. I don't know what he wants to do. I said, he may want to be with this woman. She said, I asked him. He said, he does not. He does not want to break up his family. Okay, great. So now we know. Now we know which relationship he's going to have to mourn. And she said, well, he said it's not an affair, that they are just good friends. Well, fine. The, the good friendship must come to an end because it's now it's been brought to your front porch. You see what I always told Michael was if you're going to cheat, if it's going to be an emotional affair or some blow job or whatever it is, it better not come to my door. You better be smart enough to keep it far away from my front door. Once it comes to your house, it's a problem. Keep it on the other side of the country where I don't have to look at it and never have to hear about it comes to my door. Now it's a problem. I'll, I'll be more pissed that it showed up on my doorstep than that it happened. Are you kidding me? What are you, an amateur? Get that, get your trash off my door. Get your trash off my porch is who I am. I'm not the, why did you do this to me? I'm the, if you don't get your whore off my porch now, I'm going to whoop her ass and then I'm going to beat your ass. Get her off my porch and get these kids to soccer right now. That's who I am. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but that's who I am. Okay, back to the situation. So she said, well, everybody else said to leave him. Well, what does that even mean? Everybody else said to leave him? Uh, okay. You think that'll be easy? You think that will be easy? Will, will forgiving him, will getting through this, will going to therapy and working this out, will putting the work into your marriage, will you having to get your ass up as a wife and put the work in be easy? No. 
but you think breaking up your family and getting a divorce is easy or in some ways easier um really i said to her do you want to be a, do you want to be a single mom do you want to do this alone do you want to split holidays people think divorce is the answer let's get divorced it's not working I can't forgive you. Okay. You want to, let's play it through. Let's play it through. Have you given any thought to the fact that the state that you live in will require, will, will require a for sale on your home? Do you want to absolutely move the kids out of their home? And find another house in that school district that costs a fortune? Do you want to split holidays? Do you want to then have to at some point see another woman with your kids? Or, or figure out another man? Do you, do you understand? I have never been divorced. But I have, through Coffee Talk, experienced... Uh, firsthand what divorce does to people what it does to children I said to her so therapy will be hard forgive forgiveness will be hard uh, so you can't forgive him fine how about when your daughter tells you she doesn't forgive you because now we would love to believe that our children will be angry at the person who had the affair but guess who the children are usually angry at the parent they trust most. I said to her, are you prepared for that? I'm not trying to guilt you into staying, but I don't think your friends who are telling you to just get divorced are really playing this out. Now, ladies, let me say this. I am not saying that you should become a doormat for anyone. I am not saying that you should um, take things lying down or just forgive when they betray you. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that I'm saying that I ask you to just consider your options before you jump into, I'm just gonna get a divorce. Um, I'm not even saying, I'm not even saying that therapy and um, work can fix it. I don't know, but I do believe it's worth trying. I do believe that a 13 year marriage and two children and a beautiful life together. And I know you're going, but he was having an emotional, I know, I know all of that. Now here's something I'm gonna say and you guys are gonna get very angry at me. So I want you to take a deep breath and think about one reason that you love me so that when you feel instinctually like you wanna choke me right now, that you can Love me through what I'm about to say. You don't have to agree with me, but I want you to just hear me, okay? People don't have emotional affairs when they are getting what they need from their spouse. My friend is very much like Michael. Needs nothing physically needs nothing emotionally doesn't matter to her if they kiss or have sex ever it's not who she is it's not who she ever was now did he know this about her when he married her yes but does does that fact matter 13 years in when you are lonely and feel unseen no Um, 
sometimes people hide behind, uh, stop doing work in marriage and they hide behind, this is who I am. You knew who I was. Well, sometimes the repercussions of that is an emotional affair. Um, here's what I'll say. Um, men especially don't have emotional affairs unless they are really, really emotionally neglected. Men don't need as much as women. Um, and when I said this to her, she said, I know you're right and it makes me sick. I know you're right and it makes me sick. Um, when I went through a situation with Michael and it all kind of came to a head, we were in therapy. I said to him, have I not been a good partner? Have I not t always been independent? Have I not always made my own money? Have I not always contributed? Have I not? And his response shocked me. His response was, you've always been so independent that I didn't think I could come and talk to you. I'm sorry, what? So now I'm being punished for being independent and making my own money and doing my own thing. He said, no, you're not being punished. I'm just trying to make you understand why I didn't come to you, why I didn't tell you the truth, why I didn't confide in you, why I didn't communicate because I didn't think you would understand because you don't make mistakes like this because you are great at everything. And, and I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? So... <clears throat> I had never considered that before. Anyway, when all was said and done and we got to the end of the conversation, she said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for at least allowing me to believe that there is another option. Thank you for allowing me to believe that I don't have to leave him if I don't want to. Thank you for giving me permission to do the work if I want to do the work. Um, and she said, um, we're going to put a pin in this over the holidays and come back to it at the top of the year and figure out what the next steps are. But, you know, it was very interesting. Um, she didn't shed one tear. She didn't shed one tear. I think that's very telling. I'm not saying that women are expected to fall apart, but I would think that most of us, if we found that our husband was having an emotional affair for years, that we would shed a tear, but she didn't. And I, I waited a while and I called her back. I FaceTimed her and I said, Hey, my love, I'm going to say something that was, is really hard for you to hear. She goes more more, more hard things for me to hear. And I said, yes, more hard things for you to hear. I said, I think there was a part of you that subconsciously knew that somebody else was putting the work into your marriage. Somebody else was carrying the responsibility of emotionally fulfilling your husband. And you were in denial. You knew something was going on, but you didn't want to address it because he was showing up at home every night and doing his job as a husband, as a father, but somebody else was doing the heavy lifting. And I think now that it's been brought to your attention and it's been 
brought to your front porch, you have to deal with it now. You've got decisions to make. But I think it was going on and you knew it was going on. And part of you was relieved that you were not responsible for taking care of your husband emotionally. That's what I think. And she smiled and said, you may be right. You may be right. And I think that a lot of times when things are going on, for a long time we know. Maybe not the whole time, but long enough. And sometimes we're so disgusted and just tired, we don't want to deal with it. And we don't, they're doing the, they're doing what they need to do at home. And we know that something's going on. We don't know what it is. And we figure, let somebody else deal with his shit. You know, marriages come in all shapes and sizes. And whatever your marriage is and whatever you have, you have to work out. Allison, I hear you, sister. I hear you. Um, anyway, I, I think it's very complex and I don't think there are any right answers, you know? Um, but I do think that getting a divorce is always what people think is the easy decision. And I challenge you to speak to friends who have been divorced so that you can hear just how not easy that decision is. Uh, because divorce sometimes when, when things are hard feels like freedom. Uh, and I, and, and it isn't, uh, it isn't, um, it isn't, um, divorce, I wouldn't say is freedom. I would say it's, you know, it's the end of a business, I guess. I don't know. I don't have all the right answers. I definitely do not. I just know that, I just know that I've watched people go through a divorce and it's almost killed them. And everybody should check in with their spouse this holiday season. Really, really check in with your spouse. How are we? How are you? You know, we, we spend a lot of money over the holidays and we, a lot of times our spouses don't want to tell us when money is tight, they, they're embarrassed and it's the holidays and there's a lot of pressure. You know, I sit down with Michael, I say, here's what I've been spending. Is this okay? Is there anything about this that makes you nervous? Do I need to pull back? You know, here's, you, you know, financial conversations are tough, but it is, they are important. They are important. Check in with your spouse. We just don't check in anymore. We don't ask the hard questions um, because we don't want to do the work. We're all tired and we're all lazy and we all think that fidelity just comes with being married. I'll do nothing, but you must stay faithful. Fuck that. I'm not, y'all. I'm just letting you know right now. I'm looking you in the face and telling you right now that ain't me. I have needs, they need to be met. If you don't meet them, I will communicate to you. If I communicate to you and you still don't meet them, I will cheat. My name is Jamie, that is my truth. Love me or hate me, judge me if you want, that's who I am. Um, all right. <laughs> oh my God, you are so cute. Susan Hall, I love you so much, you are adorable. Um. I love you guys. I hope that if nothing else, this gives you something to think about uh, and have those financial conversations with your spouse. You will, you will be happy that you did. He will be happy that you did or she. Um, all right. I love you. Love you. Love you. I love you, Paula. Um, I love you. I really do. Have a great, great day.